Hello and welcome to Felix Read Smut, a show where I, Felix Hugo Fraldrus, read fiction sent to me by people that clearly have it out for me. Let's begin. To people, the blizzard, one blanket, what can possibly happen? I wonder what genre this is. I bet it's a horror. First, let's make the text super big, in case anyone walks in, they can get a good look at what's going on here. And then we put this in dark mode because we don't hate ourselves. This is actually very well written. Demeter needs every victory against the professor he can get. The longer he stays around, the weaker and more pathetic he fears himself become. It truly, Dimitri, this has nothing to do with the professor, you are simply weak and pathetic. The little bitch just had to rub it in that she has more experience than he does in winter marches. I would never call the professor that. What is the boar's deal? Being petty and salty is my brand. Hey, Sylvain. What is Dimitri's email? Uh, it's not little bitch a Garrig. Okay, fine. How many chapters is this? Yeah, we're not reading all of this, but we're at the first five. Perhaps we'll come back to one of the others on a future episode. To summarize this part, the boar and the professor are on a mountain for some reason, and he doesn't want to seek shelter from the blizzard on the horizon. The professor seems to have tripped on a smallish cliff or something. And it looks like this is in her perspective now. It's a struggle not to allow her face to show how she feels whenever she hears him have these one-sided conversations with the ghosts that haunt him. I was right, this is a horror. I'm professor. Why didn't you reveal that information when you returned? Well, first of all, it's none of your fucking business, Dimitri. What concerns the professor doesn't concern you. And I don't know if you tried talking to yourself after the time skip, but I can see why the professor wouldn't want to talk to you. Seth has found and read my father's journal. He is aware of it. Apparently, this isn't the answer Dimitri anticipated either. Gerald kept a journal. That's toxic masculinity, boy. Anyone can have a journal. I have one where I keep track of every way you've ever owned me. Hey, 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 hey. The professor has taught me expletives too. Byleth makes the mistake of patting both palms against his neck to prove a point. She expects a flinch and maybe a curse. But not to have her legs swept out from under her and her wrists pinned. Oh, perfect timing. Let me grab him and we can summarize what we read so far. Hello, Felix. You say you required assistance. Yes, please come take a seat. I sent me some fiction to read that stars you and the professor as its titular characters. I just want to get your thoughts on the portrayal of your character. What kind of fiction? I believe horror, but I'll summarize the first two chapters for you. You and the professor are on a mountain for some reason. She fell. Hit her head. You're being mean to her because there's a blizzard, and you'd rather be a bitch sickle than to share your cloak with the professor. And to prove this point, you have pinned her to the ground in a suggestive manner. I would never. Let's keep reading. I like that you have her pinned to the floor and are mentally reviewing the entire history of Fodlin. Felix, I'm going to go. If you leave, I will email this to the professor from your account. I'm sure your password is probably Velvet123. Fine. Your hands are cold, he tells her for a lack of anything better to say. Isn't this the same line the guy from Pride and Prejudice uses? I don't know what that is. Felix, you don't have a blocker. Your hands are cold. Oh, she's the one that says it. Okay, this is you. And that's the professor. Did I read the same chapter twice? Or are they still arguing about the clock? Tell me, Dimitri. If you were in this situation, would you share a cloak with the professor? Of course. I would let her use my cloak. That's not what I asked. I asked if you would share it. Oh, I suppose. You know, no, Gerald better than I ever have. There's no way he would not be proud of you. That's almost sweet. Can we move it along? I get it. You're eager to get to the smart. The what? Professor, no. That's the opposite of what I told you to do. I demand to know who wrote this. She has desperation she cannot hide. I cannot look at this. Is that so? No worries. I can read it to you. Whatever is on her face does something to simultaneously alarm and infuriate him. His hand slides from her. Stop, stop. I will read. <laughs> she said she's going to regret it. I'm glad that you are thinking about Sylvain during such an intimate moment. Hey Sylvain, Dimitri thinks of you when he's shacking up with the professor. That's cool, I also think of him when I'm shacking up with the professor. Leave. My name. He tells her in a voice thick and hoarse. Yes, no, and stop. That's all I want to hear from you. Do you understand? Dimitri, what? Only that I wish you would respect my request to stop. She lacks up and it's a little too rough. It reminds her that he's there, he's real, and that he's not going anywhere. What are you guys looking at? I said leave. I'm having a hard time visualizing this. I thought they were already cuddling, but it says yes, she is half crawling over. Care to explain? How would I know? I didn't write this. I have no fault, only that death could not come for me sooner. 
Are you something of a prodigy when it comes to anything involving your body? That's quite the claim. Oh, so being a hoe is hereditary. I didn't know that. This isn't a bad hoe. This is his. Wow, that's selfish. Okay, well, we're going to have to censor all that. Felix, move it along. I'm begging. Dimitri considers the benefits of attending the war meetings once a week. If it means potentially getting by death alone, and having a repeat of tonight. Way to make this war all about you getting laid, Bill. I mean, I have. And technically, shouldn't we all be at a war meeting right now? But instead, we are here reading this. Wait, Felix. What does that say? It looks like it says. If only she had paid attention to Felix, please, for her to do something about him. Or, I didn't know you cared that much. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That must be a typo. Wow. She took it back with the sword of the creator. Dimitri thoughts. Okay. I don't want to make this weird, but... Do you think the professor has ever, you know, with anyone? I'm um, actually... I don't know. I suppose we wouldn't be able to know, right? Let's try asking her from your email. Felix, no. Stop. Give me that. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode of Felix Rates Smut. This one was pretty solid. I give it an 8 out of 13. I don't know if I'll do this again, but if you want to recommend fix in the comments, I might ignore them. Bye.